Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Seymour EA9 HMI series headless RHMI to solo process temperature controller. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So open my screen here, if we go to, I've started a new project and under setup we can go to panel manager. And under panel manager it tells me exactly what the type of uh, panel I'm using which is the EA9-RHMI. It's the headless Seymour unit and then we have the project resolution. Now the project resolution using the headless you must specify and that will be for um, connecting your external devices like your Windows or your Android or iOS operating system uh, remote access to that unit. So in this particular case I have selected the 720 by 480 standard definition uh, uh, resolution. Then what we've done is we've checked off our log, log header, row into log file. So we'll be logging in the process and the set value of our process temperature controller. Then if we look under the COM port, you can see here that our protocol will be the Automation Direct Solo Temp Controller. It's coming in port number two. The, the slave number is going to be one. The baud rate and parity and stop bit 9600 even in one. Then we have our time ups that we left as default. Now this must match exactly the same protocol parameters as what we have in our solo process temperature controller. And this actually uses our um, COM port number two, which is RS485, so you can see here. And we can actually add up to 32 uh, solo units to this um, uh, system configuration. So 32 onto our network that we can grab information from. So let's say cancel that. And then what we'll do next is we will go to setup and then we'll look at our panel network. Our panel network, first of all, it'll tell us our panel name. We called it the RHMI Solo. Our Ethernet port, we've set it a static IP address of 192.168.1.124 or 24. And then our subnet and our gateway. We also set our DNS server and our alternative server. These are the Google numbers. Then under FTP, we've enabled our FTP. Our password and our account is ACC with the password of ACCA. Our email. Now we haven't set up the email, but we have set up email before and there'll be links in, in the um, down below in order where you can find how to set up your email. We have web server. Web server is set for port number 80. Again, the password's the same. Account ACC password ACCA and you can set whatever you'd like to set that up. Then we have remote access and with the remote access we've, we've set it up. Again it defaults to port uh, 11,102 and our log on information we're going to do full control our account name ACC the password is ACCA and our user restriction or the number of users that can operate or be connected to this controller at the same time is going to be five. So that is our setup for our panel network. Then we actually look at our screens themselves. And under our screens, what you'll see is that we have a couple of bitmaps, a few bitmaps, and we'll just double click on it. And you can see how we can bring in a bitmap. We can stretch to make it look. We can set a transparency color. So that's pretty standard that we've uh, uh, looked at before. We've also set one for the, the logo. And then we have a button here to go to our graph. And that button we'll just call up page number two, which is our solo graph. So pretty standard so far. And we have our solo graph. We put our graphing on here. Our pens automatically come from our, our uh, database. And it's the present value and the set value of our solo in red and green that we're going to do and it comes from our database here and you can see here's our two process that we've set up that are unsigned integer 16-bit then under option 
what we've done is we've said collect our uh, save our log data and our log data is going to be going to a USB drive that we're going to have so that's going to be all set up so it looks good can't sell that then if we go back to our original screen you will see that I have the nice graphic here that I've actually programmed in myself and how I did that is you can see if we go look down there's a group one and that group one is actually where all this graphic is so if I were to highlight this it'll be one but then I can right click and I can say ungroup when I ungroup that what happens is all of my different items that I've done or brought into that to make that um, picture comes up so I have a static bitmap I have an increment and decrement um, unit I have a numeric entry then I have indicator lights and I have a, a numeric display a numeric display is my uh, present value my numeric entry is my set value and I have my increment decrement which shows up and down which will automatically adjust that setting for me and then I have um, my indicating lights and my indicating lights are all of my things like my outputs my degree C degree F that I want to show so that's how I do that and then if I right click again I can hit group again and it groups it all back for me and we will reduce that down so we can see this so what we do is we get a customized unit here and what we can do is actually save that to our local library and we can just say um, object library and we can give it a name solo 4896 and we can save as internal tags and it will actually then put in our under user object library our solo unit which is right here that way if I have another project I can then call that up and use that same information once again so let's uh, go ahead and what we'll do is we will actually look at our hardware that we have so here we have our um, power supply which is powering up our our headless Seymour then we have our uh, solo process temperature controller the 4896 which is communicating um, with the 485 back to port number two here and you can see that my indicating light the transmit receives I've transferred this program over and it's communicating to that unit you'll also see I have my USB uh, stick plugged in and what that will do is allow me to log the data which you is onto this USB drive right now I'm connected through my Ethernet port right here back for programming and for monitoring I also have beside here is a uh, the Android app open and running which is actually communicating and showing the value that we have here and what we can do is also at the same time we can look at our Windows application and the Windows application again looks like this I'll move it over a little bit and here we go here and there's our solo process controller with the values that we're seeing so what I'll do is hold on to my thermocouple and as I hold on to my thermocouple the present value will then start changing and you can see that the changes are reflected both on our Windows remote access as well as our Android remote access that we're displaying and I'll just hold on to it tightly and you can see that we can ramp, rapidly ramp it up so it's just showing you the values then what we can do is on our windows you can see here that we can adjust the temperature we can go up and we can go back down again we could actually press this value here and it actually comes up and asks me for my numeric entry let's put in um, 50 enter and it's going to put 50 now in and that reflects both on all of this 
So that seems to be working really well. Again, if I look at my Android app, if I hit the double click on the lock, just so that we can take control. There we go. That. There we go. Lock button. Now, once I have my lock button on, I can then hit the up and it will increment. Hit the down, it'll decrement. So we can do a couple of those, or else you can hit the actual unit itself. And I can enter a value in here. And we'll say, let's go 600 or 66. We'll enter that. And again, it enters it in and you see that it updates everything that we have on our screen. So very nice setup, very easy to implement. And again, all the information is contained there at our website at accautomation.ca. And you can also download this and try it out for yourself. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.